So now we know that trees are great candidates for boosting as well if you are using gradient boosting right uh, uh, but trees are great candidates for bagging as well right. So what is the important property in bagging that we talked about? What does bagging help us do? Reduce variance. Reduce variance. Reduce variance, right? So bagging allows us to reduce variance, and in fact, uh, you can show that uh, the radian, uh, the <laughs> reduction in variance is highest if the classifiers that you are building, okay, are not correlated, right? So I am building many many classifiers, and the classifiers are predicting the same output, right? So if the classifier parameters that I am estimating are somehow, if I can make them uncorrelated. Right, then the reduction in variance is maximum. It's kind of intuitive, right? If the if the classifiers are very correlated, then there is no point. They are not really different classifiers, right? They are going to give me the same output, so the variance will be high. So if I can somehow make the classifiers uncorrelated, then the reduction in variance is high, right? So the so there is actually a very specific relation between the amount of correlation between the classifiers and the uh, and how much you you pay in terms of the reduction in variance right so i'm not going to derive that i'm just pointing it out to you so if you want you can look it up it's there in uh, esl right and uh, if you think about what we are doing with bagging right you're taking one data set right and you're sampling with replacement from that right so the probability of the trees that you are generating being correlated is rather high right the probability of the trees that you are generating being correlated is rather high. So can we come up with some way in which we can reduce the correlation between the trees that you are constructing, right. So I am going to be doing bagging, right. But the goal is to reduce correlation between trees, right? So the people who came up with the random forest had a very very simple idea for doing this, right? You start doing bagging as you would normally do, okay? So you have your data set, then you create a bag by sampling from replacement, sampling with replacement from that data, and now when you start building the tree on this data set, so what you do is at every node. sample some p features from your feature set we use p for the regular feature description right so let me let me use a different so you have total of p features right your data points come from some rp space you use randomly sample some t features from that p features okay find out which is the best split point which is the best split variable among these t features alone split the data go down to each of the subsets repeat the same process sample another t variables right not 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 necessarily disjoint right i'm just sample again okay sample again t more variables okay and then try to find out which is the best split point among these t variables and keep doing this so what does this get us see if you had actually worked with the same uh, data set right which i mean if you had just done bagging at the root level it's highly likely that each one of the bagged trees would have picked the same attribute right just because you have subsampled it again right so it doesn't mean that the very predictive attributes will get discarded so at the higher levels of the trees it will look very similar right but now you are getting rid of that i said okay you choose i have chosen randomly i have chosen t uh, t variables and only from them i'm choosing the best variable therefore i am reducing the chances that the trees will look similar can in fact you can show that this leads to significant reduction in the variance uh, in the bag estimate and uh, random forest end up performing very well in fact 
random forests are competitive with gradient boosted trees in some applications and vice versa right. So, boosted trees are better than random forests in some applications and random forests are better than boosted trees in some applications and because uh, sometime till some time back there are very efficient uh, random forest libraries and so people use random forests a lot right, but now there are also very nice libraries available for gradient boosted decision trees and therefore, uh, try everything and see which works right.